families are sitting away. It's in the prayers. Ready? Okay. All right. Thanks, Eddie.
No, they're... Oh. Yeah, what was that? All right, so now it'll turn me down. There we go. Uh, you know, uh, the last time I was getting ready to go on a week of vacation, we had all kinds of technical problems. Those of you who are here remember, right? It took us like 15 minutes to get the service started. So we got technical problems again this morning, and uh, they're trying to rectify one thing, but we're not going to delay it. We're just going to, Jim, we're going to go with one camera if you can't get the other one. The one camera is turned upside down. The image is upside down. We can't figure out why that is. So it's like, oh, there's a church where the people stand on their heads. That's pretty impressive. Uh, anyways, so I'm just going to launch into this, and uh, when the live stream is able to join us, that's uh, great. So welcome to our worship service this morning, uh, both those of you who are gathered here in the space uh, and those of you who are joining us online. And a special welcome to the families and friends of those uh, young ones who are being baptized today. We're glad that you can join us for this uh, special occasion. I have uh, some announcements I'd like to draw to your attention. And uh, these are all listed in the bulletin, but I just want to highlight a few of them. First of all, a week from Wednesday, uh, we're going to have our uh, annual campfire service. So we meet out in the back patio, we get a bonfire going, we have a wiener roast uh, prior to, and then at 7 o'clock, uh, then we sing some camp songs, uh, hear some scriptures, and, and have an informal time of worship. So if that's something that would interest you, then please note that on your calendars. Uh, you're invited to bring along your camp chairs if you want, but if you forget, that's no problem. We'll just pull some chairs out from the church and have them on the patio. So that's on Wednesday, August 28th, and the service begins at 7, but uh, people can start roasting their hot dogs and whatever, like around 6.30. So I'll make sure the fire's going by then. Secondly, uh, it's, I'm sure you've seen the advertisements about back to school stuff that's already happening, right? And uh, that also means that uh, Sunday school is gonna be starting up uh, soon enough. And there's information uh, listed here about how to register children for uh, Sunday school. And, uh, and I think that's a good time for me to introduce to you our new uh, parish worker. So this is Beth Callum, who you might recognize as someone who has helped out with uh, being a worship assistant, has also played trumpet for a number of our services and whatnot. Beth is our new parish worker. So would you welcome her? So uh, prior to this, uh, Beth was a teacher at Luther College for a number of years, and she brings a lot of really good skills with her uh, to this work. And, uh, you know, we'll, while we're not really letting her kind of ease into it, we're kind of throwing her into the deep end here because the fall startup is all kinds of stuff. But if you have any questions about stuff related to Sunday school or youth group um, or messy church, any of those, uh, Beth is the person you can speak with. So, and she's also my worship assistant this morning. So, all right, thank you. I'll, you won't have to be on the spot anymore right now. That's <laughs> um, and then uh, you'll notice that there's uh, something on here about the Christ Lutheran Church Scholarship. This is a scholarship that we make available to um, uh, members of the congregation, students from the congregation who are attending Luther College. Uh, and um, we need uh, submissions in, uh, <laughs> Um, Lauren Dienberg's mailer in the narthex there by September 23rd. So uh, if you have any questions about that, you can uh, check uh, with uh, the office um, or uh, with myself or with uh, Lauren himself. Um, and then I think th the last thing I'll say is uh, some people asked me already today, well, how are your holidays? I said they were short and I'm going on vacation again. Like, it's been chopped up this summer. So um, I'm leaving, uh, we're leaving hopefully this afternoon to go to Alberta to visit family. So uh, both Beth and I have siblings in the uh, Edmonton area. My, grand my grandparents, my parents are in the, in the uh, camp area. So, so that's, uh, that's what we're doing today. So I'm cutting in and out because Oh, 
volume a little bit up and down just a little bit see if that's see if it's a dirty pot check check I don't know well I can use my teacher voice in here but it doesn't help the people on the, on the live stream uh, we won't worry about it what was I saying oh, I was telling you about my holidays so so uh, we're leaving today, and, uh, but we'll be back at the end of the week. Um, but if there's need of pastoral assistance this week, Pastor Carlton Larson has agreed to uh, be the person on call. So if you need to get a hold of Pastor uh, Larson, you just call the office and we can get you his contact info and, uh, and then whatnot. So, okay. So, I think... Oh. Okay. All right, so Heather, uh, our usher for today, has said that there's a, some keys left on the bench back there. So if that happens to be your keys, then they're on the shelf just right at the back. All right. Let's take a few moments of quiet reflection, and then we will begin our worship. I'll invite you to stand for our call to worship. Rejoice, seekers of wisdom and truth. God's wisdom calls us here. Behold, followers of godly direction and guidance. Christ's love shows us the way. Sing, children of thanksgiving and praise. The Spirit's presence gathers us together. Our gathering hymn is Soli Deo Gloria. That's Latin for to God alone the glory. And uh, we're singing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5.
So we continue with the uh, confession and forgiveness portion. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll uh, sing our next hymn, which is uh, a hymn in preparation for the baptism. Wash, O God, our sons and daughters. Congregation uh, can be seated, and I'll ask the baptismal families to come forward. Yeah, we'll just, um, everyone will, we'll make sure you all get up here. That's good, Sister Yvonne, I think that's good. There, excellent. 
So let us celebrate God's gift of grace given to us in the sacrament of baptism. <coughs> in baptism, God promises to love us, forgive us, and always be with us. By water and the Spirit, we are called, claimed, and commissioned. We are called God's own, welcomed as children of God, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. In the Gospel of Mark, we read Jesus' words, Let the little children come to me, do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. So I'll ask uh, each uh, parent in, in uh, order here, uh, that I've got here. So, who is it that you present for baptism? And who is it that you present for baptism? So you have brought these children to receive the sacrament of holy baptism, and on the strength of God's gracious love for us, and in communion with the Christian church, will you, parents and sponsors, by your words and actions, encourage and walk with them in the way of Jesus? Do you promise to pray for them and teach them to pray? Do you promise to nurture them within the community of the Christian church? We will, with God as our helper. People of God, do you promise to support Ezra and Keaton and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. So parents and sponsors, I ask you to reject sin, acknowledge your faith in Christ Jesus, and profess the faith of the Christian church. Trusting in God's love and mercy, do you reject evil and all its many forms and all its empty promises? And trusting in Christ Jesus' grace and love, do you accept his presence in your life as the one who draws you to God? With all God's people throughout time and space, let us together profess our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended he into heaven. heaven. He is, he is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father, and, and he, he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Catholic, the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gift of life and within it, the gift of water. Now may your spirit be upon us and what we do that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now a special little address here to to Keaton and Ezra. For you, Keaton and Ezra, God made the world out of nothing. For you, God called Israel out of Egypt and brought Israel back from exile. <laughs> For you, little children, Christ came into the world to teach the children. For you, Christ died on the cross and rose again. For you, God sent the Holy Spirit to give you strength to live as you ought. For you, Christ will come again and take us to God. Ezra and Keaton, you know nothing of this, but we promise to tell you the story until you make it your own. And so with that, we'll baptize. And I think we'll start with Keaton here.
Keaton James Christopher Ogilvy. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keaton, child of God, on this day you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ. Joined with Jesus, you are a child of God now and forever. May God, who has given you new life through water, word, and spirit, guide you, inspire you, and work within you all the days of your life. Amen. Here we go. And now, Ezra. Yeah, you need to see your brother being baptized, absolutely. This happened to you not that long ago. Yeah, it's okay. All right, Ezra, Lucian Schnell, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There we go. May God, who has given you a new life through water, word, and spirit, guide you, inspire you, and work within you all the days of your life. Amen. And Ezra, child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ. Joined with Jesus, you are a child of God now and forever. Amen. Yeah, it's all right. Let the light of Christ, which God has placed in your heart, shine through your words and actions from this day forward. As these are being passed out, uh, we explain this is like a baptismal birthday candle, and we would encourage you on the anniversary of this date in years to come to light the candle, have a little celebration so that Keaton and Ezra would be reminded that they are children of God and that something special happened in their life on this date in the years previous. Let us pray. Gracious God, forever faithful to your promise, we thank you for assuring us again that you will forgive us and receive us as children in Christ. Grant wisdom and love to Vaughn and Celeste, Aaron and Sean, and to us all as we carry out the vows we have just made. We pray that you will guide Ezra and Keaton and all our little ones throughout their lives. Enable them to respond in faith to the gospel. Fill them with your spirit and make their lives fruitful. Give them strength to endure trials. And when Christ returns, let them celebrate with all the people of God your greatness and goodness forever in the joy of your new creation. Amen. I want to ask the congregation to rise as we welcome these two little ones into the family of God. So family of God, we now receive Keaton and Ezra into Christ's church. I ask you to nurture and love them and to encourage them to be Christ's faithful disciples. With, With joy, joy and, and thanksgiving, thanksgiving, we welcome, welcome you into our, our family of faith. faith. We, we promise to love, encourage, encourage and support you and, and to, to help, help you know, know and follow Christ. The peace of God be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment in a way that you feel comfortable to share a word of peace with those around you as we do so up here.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'll invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Living God, God, you are the giver giver of of wisdom wisdom and true true discernment, discernment, guiding those who seek your ways to to choose the good. good. Mercifully grant grant that your people, feasting on the true bread of heaven, heaven, may have have eternal eternal life life in Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. We hear from Scripture. A reading from Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Wisdom built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She slaughtered her animals, mixed her wine, and set her table. She sends out her female servants. She issues an invitation from the top of the city heights. Whoever is naive, turn aside here, she says to those who lack sense. Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Abandon your simplistic ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. Here ends the reading. A reading from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. So be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly. Take advantage of every opportunity, because these are evil times. Because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. For our gospel acclamation today, uh, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, This is uh, based on a Hasidic tune, um, Open Your Ears, O Faithful People. Solange, if you're wondering why you weren't getting any guitar sound, it helps if it's plugged in. I think I need a vacation. So I've actually conscripted Beth here to play uh, this is going to be confusing as I got two Beths up here. Like, so, so Beth Parish worker to play the, the cymbals or the tingsha. And, um, and Beth is going to play the piano. I'm going to play guitar. And we're going to see how we do with this. So we're going to get you to stand. If we were truly doing this in Jewish fashion, we'd be doing a kind of a, a dance with it. But uh, we're, we're not going to do that. We're just going to try and sing it. So I'm going to ask Beth to play through the whole thing once and then we'll try and sing it. So how many of you have heard that melody before, you think? It's a, it's a fairly famous uh, Hasidic or Jewish melody. All right, we're going to try it. Here we go. Oh. them 
culturally appropriately we would now speed up and we would sing it and each time we sing the chorus just the chorus uh, we speed up a little bit so see if you can keep up with me here we go just the chorus here we go God is God has spoken to the people, alleluia. God has spoken words of wisdom, alleluia. One more time. God has spoken to his people, alleluia. God has spoken words of wisdom, alleluia. God has spoken to his people, alleluia. God has spoken words of wisdom, alleluia. And now please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking, he says. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews debated among themselves, asking, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the human one and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. My flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me lives because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It isn't like the bread your ancestors ate, and then they died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Gracious God, in these next moments as we reflect on these scripture readings, we ask that your spirit would be with us to inspire and encourage. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm going to begin by saying that I'm not going to speak on the gospel at all um, because the, we're in now the fifth uh, week of a six-week cycle of readings from the gospel of John all on Jesus as the bread of life or the bread of heaven. And next Sunday, that's going to be my focus. So if you are interested in hearing about that, come back next Sunday and I promise you uh, we'll talk about the bread of life. But what I want to talk about today is wisdom and its connection with music. So I don't know if you noticed uh, the, the reading from Proverbs. It sort of uh, pictures wisdom as a woman who has prepared a fine banquet. 
and then invites, uh, is inviting everyone in town to come in to the banquet. Now, uh, when you think of a banquet, like I was trying to think, what kind of banquets uh, do we have? Well, sometimes we have banquets when someone is receiving a reward or something like that. But maybe the most common banquet that uh, most of you have participated in at one time would be a wedding banquet, a wedding reception, right? And my experience with wedding receptions is that the food is always plentiful and it's always good and there's a, you know, a great deal of enjoyment as people are just enjoying being together and eating together. And that's sort of the image then that we have from Proverbs, that wisdom is saying, come in, I've got this banquet prepared for you and uh, it's gonna be a really valuable time together. You will appreciate this, you will enjoy this, and you will come away as better people. So she, uh, Wisdom, who is personified as this woman here, uh, she sends out this invitation to the whole city. So uh, she sends out her servants to go and give this. Uh, today, it wouldn't be sending out servants. It'd be like putting it on Facebook, putting it on Instagram, you know, putting, somehow we get the message out that there's this banquet that everyone is welcome to. This is not a closed banquet. This is not a banquet that you have to be on the guest list. Everyone is invited to this banquet of wisdom. And the invitation says this, whoever is naive, turn aside into here. So this, this is where you should come. If you're naive, come here. Those who lack sense, come here. Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Abandon your simplistic ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. A couple of key words in that phrase. One is simplistic. I uh, was talking with uh, my good friend David Hilderman the other day who was in town visiting and uh, we were talking about the world and all the stuff going on in the world and then we were even talking about our human bodies and, uh, and, and you know how sometimes they get ill and sometimes they get better and it's, we don't always know exactly how this works and so on and so forth. This is what I said. The older I get, the more I believe that the world is highly complex. That makes us uncomfortable because we like to feel like we've got things in control and we thus want to simplify things. Let me tell you one of the ways that this, this uh, intention or this desire for simplification is taking place in our world right now. We polarize things. We make everything into a dualism. It's either this or it's this. So uh, you see this in all kinds of places, but probably the most easiest place to spot it is in politics. You know, uh, you have each side demonizes the other side. This is particularly easy to spot in the United States because they only have a two-party system. So it's very easy to do that. And, and it's very easy, if you can just say, without thinking about it, well, they're just bad people, and I don't have to think about it anymore. Well, that makes life easier, doesn't it? You know who the good people are, and you know who the bad people are. But that's not wisdom. That's a simplistic way of approaching things. And Jesus, when he's teaching his disciples, often has to explain things, because even in his, his teaching, we discover a level of complexity. So I'll give you an example. On the one hand, Jesus uh, honors the, uh, the Old Testament law, the Torah, but Jesus is also willing to adapt as necessary, and we've had some examples of this in our readings earlier uh, this year in the Gospels, like when Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath. He's, he's breaking the law in one sense, if you look at it simplistically, and that's how some of the people were. They were looking at it simplistically, and they said, hey, that's wrong, you can't do that. So then Jesus has to say, well, hold it, which do you think gives God more glory? Healing someone, giving them back their life on the Sabbath or, or ignoring them? And then we see the, the more complex way of understanding. Jesus is looking at the situation 
and is trying to determine what is the most loving thing to do in this situation. What is the thing that will bring God glory the best in this situation? And every situation is different, and thus every answer is different. And what might be best at this time in this place may not actually be the best in this time in this place. So how do we determine what is best at any given time and in any given situation? The answer is wisdom, the wisdom of God. How do we obtain this wisdom of God? We come to the banquet. Now, I think there's an important image here about coming to the banquet, and that is that the people gather together. And as I'm, uh, one of the things I've been working on in my doctoral thesis is this concept that faith is formed in community and that we need one another to help us discern, first of all, what scripture is saying and how we apply that to our lives. And so we need Christian community. This is why baptism, uh, you know, we emphasize this idea that it's not just the parents and the child, uh, uh, the parents and the sponsor's responsibility to pray for the child and to encourage them in a life of faith. That's all of our responsibility because this is a community of faith that is necessary for true and full wisdom to be developed. So we need one another in part of the process and we need people who are skilled in discerning and uh, and so we we train people to be good biblical interpreters uh, and we go through a process of ordination and uh, and so that's one of the ways in which we try and determine how do we best understand what God is telling us in scriptures and how do we best apply that in our lives and what I can tell you is based on years and years, and I bet you Aaron would agree with me, this is Pastor Aaron Schnell over here, and uh, he's from Advent Lutheran in Calgary, and he's the brother of Vaughn. Um, and so I'm just going to put, <laughs> I'm going to put Aaron on the spot, I'm going to say, so as you've go gone through the years, has biblical interpretation become easier or more complex? More complex, because the more you learn, the more you realize you need to learn. The more you learn, the more you realize you need to learn. So it's a lifelong process, even for us pastors. I don't have all the answers, but you know, I, I make it my job to look as carefully and closely as I can to help us together discern the wisdom of God. Okay, so that's the image I want you to take with you. First of all, this image of a banquet and coming together and gathering together to receive the wisdom of God. Now, here's the tie-in with music, okay? In Ephesians, Paul is writing to the Ephesians, and at the end of the letter, uh, he says these words. So, be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly. That contrast between living wisely and living foolishly is found all throughout the book of Proverbs. So, I think Paul is hearkening back to the book of Proverbs and recognizing what's there. And then he says a little bit later, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. So that's the important thing. What wisdom is, is understanding God's will. And what Jesus helps us understand is that if you want a simple answer for that, it's this. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. But how do you apply that becomes the complex part, right? All right, so now, this is what Paul says. This is near the end of the letter, so he's sort of like, here's his final words of instruction and encouragement. He says, don't get drunk on wine, which pr produces depravity, right? Uh, so, you, you know, like things, you, sometimes if you get drunk on wine, you, then you end up saying and doing things that you later go, oh, that was not, that was not good, right? So Paul says, just avoid doing that. He doesn't say, by the way, don't drink wine. He says, don't get drunk on wine. But then, listen to what he says you should get drunk on. Did you know Paul says you should get drunk on something? Now, all of you are doubting me right now. I can see it in your eyes. You're all like, oh, I don't think he said that. Listen to what he says. He says, instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. So now, if you want to get, you know, if you want to consume too much, so to speak, Consume too much of the Spirit. 
And how do we know that you've got the Spirit? What is, what is going to be the manifestation of the Spirit working in your life? Here it is. And this is one of the verses that marks my life. This is one of the things right here. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's the sign of the Spirit at work. So when we sing congregational hymns together, and I bet you some of you already have hymns that you cannot sing without choking up. Because music has a way of getting into our lives that, that we, can, we can't even put into words. It touches us so deeply. And uh, it's powerful. It's a gift of God given to humans so that they can express things that are difficult to express in any other way. Now, the music that's appropriate for expressing the truth of God is manifold. It's, it's many different kinds. So I picked these two pictures. So you've got a sort of traditional uh, Protestant, uh, probably Anglican uh, church choir, right there with the, the, they're in their white robes and whatnot, and they're up in the altar area. Singing probably beautiful choral music, maybe arrangements of hymns, whatever. A certain style of church music, right? But the other picture is also a certain style of church music, right? From African traditions, uh, you know, the drum and dancing is part of the musical expression of faith. And all of it is singing spiritual songs to one another. All of it. And so today, one of the things I wanted to do was to include as many different songs of different styles as I could. So that's why we did the, the, uh, the Jewish song for the gospel acclamation. Because for the Jewish people, music has been central to their life throughout their whole existence. And do you know how I know that? Because the largest book in the Old Testament in the Hebrew Scriptures is the book of what? The book of Psalms. The song was central to their expression of faith. And now we see here in this New Testament reading from Paul that he's saying for Christians, it should be the same thing. That the song, the music that God gives us should be central to our faith. And so I, to me, music and worship are just one and the same thing. Music and worship are one and the same thing. So it's, it's why I delight in the fact that my family can do music together, like Beth can play and puts up with my guitar playing and stuff like that, and stuff like that. But we can do this together as a family to express faith in a way that is difficult to do otherwise. So if you want to be filled with anything, be filled with the Spirit in such a way that you are just led to sing. You're led to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. So, songs don't just belong here. These songs of faith belong everywhere. So I'll tell you a thing I did the other day. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I was taking Celine for a bike ride. Celine is our granddaughter. And we were riding along on the path, and I have this seat that sits... She sits right in front of me as we're riding, okay? And we have little conversations, except her words are like, ah, eh, 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 dog. She can say dog. Duh, up. Anyway, so at some point, we kind of didn't have anything to talk about. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to sing. And I sang a song that all of you know, and most of you know, I'm sure. And, uh, and, and you know it because it got soaked into you at some point in your life. The song was, Jesus Loves Me. You know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. With uh, elderly people who are suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia, one of the last things that will give them a spark of life is songs. 
And if you sing a hymn with some of these elderly people, they will light up and they will sing along with you. This is the gift of music. We should never take for granted this gift of music. We should celebrate this gift of music that God has given us that gets into us, into our core, right into the depths of our heart so that we can always be sustained in our faith with a song in our heart. So may that bit of wisdom go with you this day and into the uh, week ahead. May you always sense the presence of the Spirit working in and amongst you. And may you gather again with the people of God so that the banquet of wisdom can be made available for everyone, including you. God be with you. Amen. We're going to uh, sing a uh, song now that's based on this concept of uh, the wisdom being a banquet. So this hymn is called, We Eat the Bread of Teaching. It's number 518, and uh, I'll invite you to stand. calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Each uh, petition will end with merciful God and the congregational response, receive our prayer.
Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for farms, orchard, vineyards, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort, especially those in hospital or medical facilities. This morning we remember Janice Noctegall's son, Marlo, and Phil Trilinski, Verna Weiss, and Pastor Helmut Noctegall. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Merciful God. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her paths, looking toward a bright future while remembering from where we had come. We give our thanks for those who have gone before us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, in For those of you who are not familiar with how we are collecting the offering here at Christ Lutheran these days, uh, there were two uh, clear uh, boxes on the wall. You can either place your offerings in there or in the offering plate at the front. Um, you can do that at any time uh, that you would like. But we will now uh, take these uh, gifts and uh, I will say these words. We see God's work in acts of honesty and justice. We touch God's covenant in moments of mercy and compassion. Let us be God's instruments in the world as we make our offerings today. Let us pray. God of wisdom and understanding, your blessings surround us each day. We thank you for inspiring our actions and feeding our creativity. We praise you for warming our hearts and enlightening our minds. May these gifts go forth into your world and be bread and blessing to those in need. Amen. 
I'll invite you to stand for the commission. Always and for everything give thanks. Make melody to God with your whole heart. We rejoice in the gift of God's spirit as we go out to walk life's pathways. Look carefully where you walk and make wise use of your time. We look to Christ to deliver us from foolishness and write a new melody on our hearts. The living God sends us forth to serve, assuring us that we will find life. Day by day, we will feed on God's word and moment by moment, follow in God's way. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is Be Thou My Vision. Receive this blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We sing our benediction song. Go in peace, inspired by Christ to love and serve. <laughs>